Faye, I respect your opinions as my mother-in-law, but I would appreciate it if you could be more considerate with your comments. Oh, Emily, you always were so sensitive. I just can't help but notice how your upbringing has influenced your lack of taste and style. The way you decorate this house, it's just so ordinary. Well, I believe in simplicity and functionality. It's not about extravagant displays, but about creating a warm and comfortable atmosphere. Warm and comfortable? That's just an excuse for not having any class. Faye, I work long hours to support our family and pursue my career. I don't have the luxury of focusing solely on aesthetics. Don't make me laugh. You can't even keep this place tidy. I have seen better kept houses in a thrift store. It's unfair to judge me solely on the appearance of our home. I prioritize my time on things that truly matter, like my job, my marriage with Mark, and my personal growth. Personal growth? You've always been a bit lacking in that department, haven't you? A good woman knows how to take care of her home and tend to her husband's needs. Faye, being a good woman means so much more than maintaining a spotless house. Well, dear, you can try all you want, but it's clear to me that you will never be able to live up to my standards. Mark deserves someone who can truly take care of him and provide for his needs. I'm doing my best and Mark loves and supports me for who I am. We'll see about that, Emily. It's only a matter of time before Mark realizes what a mistake he made by choosing you. My name is Emily and I have always been a driven and ambitious woman. From a young age, I harbored dreams and aspiration that burned within me like a flame. Everyone in my family used to talk about what a dreamy but determined girl I was. Growing up in a small town, I knew that my journey to success wouldn't be easy, but I wanted to carve my own path in life. Life led me to meet Mark, a kind-hearted and caring man who became my husband, and together we built our life. Mark was everything I could have hoped for in a partner. Of course, he had his quirks. There were things I didn't quite like about him. I had to admit, he could be extremely oblivious to the conflicts around him. But back then, that wasn't a big deal to me. He loved and supported me unconditionally always cheering me on as I pursued my dreams, and that mattered a lot. But despite the joy Mark brought into my life, there was one person that cast a shadow over our happiness, my mother-in-law, Faye. Faye was a wealthy and traditional woman who took great pleasure in belittling my small town background. She held firmly to her traditional values and in her eyes, I would forever be an outsider who was unable to fit into her world. She lived nearby, so she would frequently visit our home, often imposing her opinions and criticizing my choices. Her visits were far from friendly check-ins. I always felt like she was a little calculated, setting out to undermine my self-esteem and assert her dominance over me and Mark. To make matters worse, Faye was quite wealthy. When my late father-in-law passed away due to cancer, he left behind a significant fortune that fell into Faye's lap. You would think that financial security is a blessing for Faye. It became a reason to assert control over others. She reveled in her wealth and used it as a means to brag and undermine others often implying that my small-town background made me less deserving of Mark's love and respect. She would say the most annoying things, and we would have a few back and forths before she denied having said anything offensive. For example, when she noticed that I had renovated our kitchen, she just had to make a comment. 
Oh, Emily, I must say, the color of the countertop in your kitchen is quite hideous. Green? Really? Well, I think it brings a sense of freshness to the space. Freshness? It looks terrible. I can't imagine anyone finding that shade appealing. Um, Faye, I chose the color based on my personal taste. Mark also liked it. It's our kitchen, after all. But you don't want a kitchen that impresses your guests. What will people think? I really don't think their opinions matter more than mine. Well, I suppose your small town background explains your lack of refined taste. Excuse me? My background has nothing to do with what I find beautiful. It's about creating a space that makes us feel at home. I just worry that your unconventional choices reflect poorly on Mark. He deserves a wife who has better judgment in matters like these. Faye, how could you say something like that? That's rude. For being defensive, my dear? I'm only trying to help you see the error of your ways. Anyway, never mind. I don't want to make a big deal out of this. And just like that, she would always make it sound like it was my fault that I was being overdramatic. Despite Faye's constant intrusion and belittlement, I strive to maintain a harmonious relationship with her for the sake of Mark and our marriage. But to be completely honest, her presence in our lives was often overwhelming, and I found myself walking on eggshells in my own home. It was truly devastating. I decided it was time for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Mark. I needed to share my feelings and concerns about Faye's behavior and its impact on our marriage. Sitting down with him, I poured my heart out, expressing the exhaustion, frustration, and hurt that had been building within me. To my relief, Mark listened attentively. He even assured me of his unwavering support and told me that he would definitely talk to Faye clearly explaining the impact of her actions and demanding respect for me. I trusted in his love and determination to make things right. Things started to look up for me. A few weeks after that, my career took a significant leap forward when I received a well-deserved promotion. This promotion came with increased responsibilities and longer hours, but I was so happy about the opportunity to prove myself and make a difference. As I threw myself into my new role, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. It really felt like nothing else mattered anymore now that I was working towards my goals. However, my hopes were quickly shattered when I realized that Faye remained unwilling to alter her behavior. As my workload intensified, Faye seemed to only see an opportunity to further assert her dominance. She began dropping by uninvited even more often, meddling in our affairs and continued to criticize me at every turn. One day, Faye took her audacity to another level. She dropped by our house again, ordered me around for half an hour, and then sat me down for a serious talk. The moment she started speaking, I was immediately shocked. Emily, we need to have a serious discussion. I think it's time for you to hand over your salary to me. What? Why would I do that? It's a tradition where I came from, my dear. The wife should entrust her earnings to the husband's family for proper budgeting and financial management. That's absolutely ridiculous. I don't come from the same place you did, Faye. I have worked hard for my salary, and I should decide how it's used. Oh, Emily, but what's good about where you're from, really? You simply don't understand the complexities of managing finances in big city life. I have experience and knowledge. It's for your own good. I am perfectly capable of managing my own finances. This demand is insulting. I won't hand over my hard-earned money to you just because you think it's suitable for a big city life. But dear, you don't have the same level of financial expertise as I do. 
It is important for your well-being and our family stability that I take control of the finances. Fay, this tradition you speak of has no place in our modern lives. You're being defensive, Emily. I'm only looking out for your best interests. No, you're attempting to undermine my independence. I do not deserve this. Fine. If you insist on being stubborn and refusing my help, then it's on you. But don't come crying to me when you find yourself overwhelmed and drowning in financial chaos. I won't need your help, Faye. Well, if you're so confident, go ahead. But don't say I didn't warn you. Try your best, all right? Her demand was not only absurd, but also extremely insulting. Yet she acted like she was only doing that for my own good. For the next few weeks, I found myself juggling the demands of work and faced relentless intrusion, and it began to take a toll on my physical and emotional being. As days turned into weeks, the tension in our household reached its peak. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I accidentally overheard a phone conversation between Mark and Faye that changed the way I saw my own husband forever. It was late at night, and Mark thought that I was fast asleep. He stood at the door to talk to Faye, not knowing that I overheard everything. Mom, I want you to know that I will always support you no matter what. We're family, and family supports each other. Don't be upset about Emily, all right? I'll talk to her and make sure she understands your point of view. She could be stubborn like that sometimes. I'm sure I could get her to give you the money in just a few weeks. My heart sank as I listened to Mark telling his mother that he supported her. It was the same sentiment he had expressed to me, but the context was entirely different. He had taken her side and lied to my face. Feeling a mix of betrayal and sadness, I realized that I needed to take control of the situation. I couldn't continue living in a toxic environment that was draining my spirit and stifling my growth. I started seeking legal advice so that I could get a divorce from Mark. It was a terrible situation. I had to do everything secretly just to make sure I could get out of the situation without sacrificing more of my mental health. My lawyer suggested looking through some of the family legal documents as he tried to make a good case for me. To my surprise, as my lawyer delved into the details, he uncovered a significant clause in my deceased father-in-law's will. The clause explicitly stated that Faye was not to touch any of his money. It became evident that my father-in-law had recognized Faye's financial management issues and he believed that she was unfit to handle such matters. I realized that I had the legal means to protect myself and regain control of my life. Still, I was very confused. Why would my father-in-law want to exclude his own wife from the inheritance? What could she have possibly done? As the divorce proceedings progressed, the truth about Faye's deceptive actions began to emerge. My lawyer uncovered evidence of her financial support for a young man, which included expensive trips, high-end restaurants, and luxurious hotels. Faye was so arrogant she didn't even try to hide her track. All the receipts were left inside the family documents folder since she was so sure that I was too stupid to understand finance. It was clear that she had been using her late husband's money to sustain a secret, possibly a romantic relationship. I was completely in shock and didn't know what to do with that information. Confronting Faye was a daunting task, but I knew that it was the perfect time to stand my ground. I wasn't going to let it go so easily, especially after everything that she had done to me. I hired someone to find Faye's young lover and get his contact. Turns out, he's a waiter in the city who had been living off of Faye's money for months. With all the evidence, I got my divorce papers ready. 
I intentionally mentioned Faye's boyfriend in the hearing, as if it was not some shocking secret. I said it as if it's something Faye had told me a long time ago, and accused her of using my money to spend on someone that's not even in the family. Mark was utterly shocked and demanded proof. Faye, on the other hand, was sobbing. She called me names, but I didn't care anymore. Faced with irrefutable proof and the weight of the law against her, she was forced to back down. The truth was exposed for all to see and Faye had to face the consequences of violating her late husband's will. In the final statement, Faye was required to pay a substantial fine for her transgressions. The money she had wrongfully claimed was redirected to charities as outlined in my father-in-law's will. It was a fitting resolution, ensuring that the wealth he had left behind would be used for the greater good. Faye's reputation was irreparably damaged, and her deceitful actions were laid bare for everyone to see. Throughout this artist's journey, Mark remained firmly supported of his mother. He blamed me for ruining his family, unable or unwilling to see the toxicity that had consumed our lives. While the stench wounded me deeply, I couldn't help but feel a sense of liberation. It was over, and I knew that my life would only get better from here. With the weight of the toxic relationship lifted off my shoulders, I was finally able to focus wholeheartedly on my career, determined to prove my worth and surpass my own expectations. I channeled all my energy into my work. As the days turned into weeks and weeks into months, my dedication and perseverance started to pay off. I took on challenging projects, embraced new opportunities, and put in the extra hours to excel in my field. My colleagues and superiors took notice of my commitment and talent, and I earned their respect and admiration. The newfound happiness within me was magical. I learned to appreciate the small moments, savor the victories, and embrace the journey. Life was no longer defined by the burdens of bad relationships, but by joy and gratitude. Today I'm proud of who I have become, a woman who perseveres and finds fulfillment and happiness in her own success.